Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad Today is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Coming up, Clash of the Titans of Twitter. Mm-hmm. Plus, Mr. Reader's on top. Take back the TSA and iPad grilling. All that and cupcakes. They're not all that. Oh. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> You're going to do the cupcakes? That's right. I can't wait. On iPad Today. iPad Today is brought to you by Slingbox, which can turn your iPad into a television. With a new iPad app from Slingbox, you can watch your home TV on your iPad anywhere you go. Check it out at slingbox.com. And by audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, visit audiblepodcast.com slash iPad Today. Leo's back. My big finger is back. Well, God love you. Uh, you were missed. I haven't seen you in like uh, it's three been weeks. A long, is that, it feels like it's a year. Almost exactly three weeks. Since you and I last convened here, mm-hmm. you've been to Idaho Falls. That's right. I've been to Norway. Uh huh. And I rode the hurdy gurdy. The hur- yes. The hurdy- <laughs> I know how to say it, by the way. Uh, according to sources familiar with the situation, a lot of people were throwing up off the side of it. So maybe I'm No, that was a different boat. That wasn't the herd of That I decided to go to France instead of Norway at the end of June. You're not going to Norway and you're not going to go in the herd of I want to eat baguettes till I puke. Oh, that's That's... even more disgusting. There was a boat ride, but there was a much smaller boat where there were people who were a little queasy. Yeah. I I was getting queasy because it was like... Yeah, yeah. But then the next day we went on a That's not Norway's fault. That's the ocean's fault. That's That's the mother sea's fault. That's not Norway's fault. I wasn't blaming Norway. Just, it was implied. It could happen anywhere. implied. But then um, I went on the... Now, let me say it right, because mm. I, I got training. Hurdy Gruten? Well, th- that's the interesting thing. It's spelled Hurta Gruten. Yes. And in Oslo, it would be pronounced Hurta Gruten. Uh-huh. But in Christiansen, where we were on the West Coast, they have a different accent. Uh-huh. And they drop the N and they drop the R. So it's Hurta Gruten. Hurta Gruten. And then they like it because it's a play on words then. Because Hurta Gruten means fast root, but it could mean if you say Hurta Gruten, it's fast window. <laughs> How can, a window, how can a window be fast? <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. Yeah, no, that's good stuff. Thank you for bringing back these tales of I, Norway. I, with I you. feel like I was in Lillehammer for a week. Well, you know, there was snow. It sounds like it, it was snowed. a pretty small rural area of Norway that you were hanging it's, out in. It was beautiful. We had a wonderful time. And you know what was cool? It's, it's actually a good idea. And I, I think about Sundance. There are other festivals where they do it in a small. Ted, originally, mm-hmm. was in Monterey. Uh, having a conference in a small town like Idaho Falls is great because you kind of really focus on the conference. I met, I met half that town in three days. Yeah, 25,000 people in Christian <laughs> Felt like it anyway. It's probably the same size as Idaho Falls. It's, it's about town. the same, yeah. 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 Um, and it was wonderful. Everybody was very warm. The festival takes over the town. There's big posters everywhere. And uh, it was just, it was great. And we met, I met so many nice people and the photographers that were there were the best in the world and they be and we became buddies so it was a really it was a great trip Catherine hall was there and mm-hmm. our twit photo will cover it we have we're going to do two twit photo specials good at the end of the month great with lots of interviews with some really amazing people greg gorman who's a hollywood photographer he did a picture of michael jackson with a tarantula on the side of his face it's pretty amazing uh, we have interviews with uh, Bruce Davidson, who's one of the most amazing. Why is, why is there a picture of Michael Jackson with a tarantula on his face just to be nutty? Nutty, just, to, just, just crazy. Just to be like just a wild. picture of Michael Jackson, not weird enough. Let's put a spider on his face. You would actually, Greg Gorman uh, took the very famous picture of Johnny Depp as the pirate. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And he has a book out of, because he's been doing this he's for so long. He's got good access. Oh, he's got great access. He has a book out of people like Depp. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, when they first started in Hollywood, they're very, very young. And it's really interesting to see these pictures of these guys and gals about to become stars. Anyway. Enough about uh, that. No, that, I'm, I'm really I, glad that you, uh, but I'm you had sorry a good time. That you're, I, I, you know, I, I taunted you by, via path with a, with a video of the Hood of Gruden. Yeah. And it didn't, it, there's no longer a taunt because you're not going to Norway. Well, I... Uh, All of Norway now is sad, by myself the way. Myself and my travel partner, who filled in for you on iPad Today uh, last week... Um, valiantly, but 
He's, you know, half the man you are, obviously. Mr. Siegler. That's right. Um, he just started talking about the south of France, like, out of nowhere. And I was like, okay, let's do a pivot. You can go to let's the south of France. pivot this vacation. Or you can go to a country shaped like a spoon. I was all into Norway, believe me. Norway is I don't the even spoon care about, like, digging into a boats deep pitching dish on the, of ice cream. on the high You would have liked Norwegian the Norwegian channel. And then, and then an odd Inga's in the chat room, and he's, ma he's mocking already, he's saying, I said hurdy grudy wrong. And then, it's almost impossible to say it's right. And then the other thing we took is a train from Bergen right through the middle of the spoon, the bowl of the spoon, to Oslo. It's beautiful. It's where they filmed planet, uh, the uh, Empire Strikes Back, the, the ice planet Hoth. That's awesome. That's really <laughs> awesome, actually. That's a reason it's, to go just for that. I got a picture you of You went on a Star Wars pilgrimage. Yeah, we That's did. amazing. But you know what? This show is not about the Hurtigrute. No, it's about iPads. There, that's the picture. Oh, so this is an He was young. Greg Gorman, yeah. This is an old picture. Yeah. He's that's been doing awful. it for Greg's been doing it. it for 40 years. I hate it more than it's I've creepy. hated anything else. But that's just the spider. It's not Michael Jackson's fault. It's actually. I don't want to look at it anymore, Chad. Take secret? it away. Do you, do you want to know the secret? It's not a live spider. Oh, Turns God. out tarantulas that's, shed their skin, and God, you just can take disgusting. the skin and put it on your that's face. It doesn't so move. That's so gross. Not enough. I want to talk about Twitter. I don't want. I want to talk about Twitter clients. Twitter Let's clients. Come back to earth. Back to earth. <laughs> you know. The, in the last week, it, 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 you think like Twitter clients. Haven't you guys talked about this ad nauseum? But a couple of the most popular Twitter clients, Twitter for iPad. Got updated? Uh, got updated in a big way, and so did TweetBot. So I, I love thought, TweetBot. well, it's a good opportunity for us to talk about some of the updates to those apps and also just other options that people have. Twitter itself for iPad, which is uh, the uh, iPad app that Twitter itself puts together, um, has updated its Discover tab. Now, why don't I see it? Oh, gosh. Is that just an iPhone so Twitter, So Twitter is that pushing... This on its website now. They have Explore, they have Discover, these new ways of kind of looking at Twitter stuff that isn't really your Twitter timeline. It's a way of discovery uh, about, you know, other people on Twitter. They also now in your timeline will show you who's following you as part of your timeline. So they've changed a lot on the web page, and I, I take it that the apps now, there, you can see it right there's the Discover. Well, but thing. that's the web version. But they're incorporating this now into. Uh, the, the the web uh, the uh, apps because they want the apps to re reflect this as well and I think it has problem, to do with an advertising is opportunity is it I, not doing it on the iPhone? Well, I understand that there's a Discover tab on the iPhone app. Well, let me look. But in iTunes, it didn't say anything like this is the iPhone only. Um, I was going to open this up here live and be like, look at this new Discover tab because I know how it works on the on web version. But there actually isn't a Discover tab in the they iPhone. They don't do it version. anymore. Hmm. Well. It or just, they didn't update it on the iPad. Well, yeah, that's not helpful. Excuse me. Mm. Yeah, I, no, it's on the iPhone at the bottom. I want a nice, clean experience. It's right there Should, at the bottom. Yeah. So you don't have that anymore, huh? Well, I, I, mean, I didn't. It, so, I mean, that was the thing about the iPad app is it worked very differently and than the, the iPhone And the at version. reply is now not just at replies, but connect. Connect, yeah. Discover is like, you know, it's kind of like trending, but more than that. So I presume that because they've updated this on the uh, iPhone that they will update this iOS wide. The thing about Twitter on iOS 5 is it's everywhere. It's integrated throughout iOS 5. So right. I'm going to show my app cap, for instance, which is not a Twitter app, but you get Twitter credentials by pressing a button and, and iOS says, yeah, 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 we'll handle that from here. So, um, no, okay, well, I'll show you. I'll show you uh, well, this is a bunch of baloney. <laughs> Jeez, I thought this was going to be really You got awesome. all excited. Yeah. Well, what's new in TapBot? Because that's what you and I use. TweetBot, you know, yeah. TweetBot. You know, actually, the, the the reason that I use TweetBot is exactly this reason. For a while, I used the Twitter iPhone app right. and the Twitter iPad app. And they acted They're a little different. bit differently, but it didn't really bother me. But one of the biggest issues I had was that they didn't sync with each other. So I'd start somewhere, and then I'd open up the app, and it would tell me I had all these DMs, and then I'd go in, and I've already read all of these DMs. There's, right. there's no sync between the two. And TweetBot, even though it's a third-party app, um, actually does this very well. Uh, so you mean if I read the iPad app. these on, because I'm logged into my TweetBot account, if mm -hmm. I read these on one device, it will automatically know that it's been read on the other? Yes. That's kind of handy. What it'll do is... I didn't even know that. It, you, can, you can actually toggle on and off. There'll be like a little bookmark icon that you sometimes see on the right-hand side of a tweet mm -hmm. in TweetBot. Mm -hmm. It was started to kind of... It was sort of 
driving me crazy because I didn't know what it was. And what it's doing is saying, this is the spot that when you open this up later, whether you're on iPhone or iPad, it'll come back to the spot because that's the spot in the timeline that you stopped. Right. That's awesome. Um, but Tweetbot not only uh, does that because that's not actually a new um, update in this version, but it also has switched um, the way that it uh, allows you to use um, gestures for kind of inline conversations. So anybody who's familiar with Tweetbot knows if you swipe to the right, to the right, yeah, then you get the conversation tab. Now, that is really cool because one yeah. of the problems is people do have back and forth conversations on Twitter, but it's very hard to piece it together. So this threads it for you so you can see all of the co replies to each other. Exactly. So handy. Yeah. No. This uh, nice man, Edward Shore, had said that he's you know excited about the show. There is no conversation because I haven't replied back to him yet. Um, but if I wanted a little bit more context on who he was, where he sent uh, the tweet from, he's using Twitter for iPhone, for example, um, and who he, what it was in reply to, that would show up. So that's pretty cool. It it's not. Tweetbot already had the swipe left, swipe right for context, but it wasn't. Um, it wasn't, uh, uh, the gestures in tweet details going back to the timeline wasn't included, um, and now the conversation view uh, contains both the conversation and replies. So it's very easy within Twitter. I think anybody can agree. It's like if you're not paying attention, you start reading these sort of truncated conversations, especially when people do that, like the retweet, and then uh, they're quoting people, and it could just, you know, sometimes it can get... Um, a little bit uh, complicated. So it's nice to have this. Let me show you. This is a fun one uh, that I think everybody should have. It's called Streamboard. Are you familiar with Streamboard? No. The idea of Streamboard is that sometimes you want to follow a story, not your Twitter stream or a list of people. But let's say uh, there's something big going on, San Francisco 49ers, and you want to follow all the tweets about it. You enter in a search uh, into Tweetboard. Uh, you could save that search. And then um, it will do in real time, it will show you all the posts. So this is a, there's not a lot going on with the 49ers. What's a, what's a hot topic uh, right now? Let's think of... Uh, oh, uh, freaking Pablo Sandoval's out for the season. Oh, no. Panda's out? Yeah. All right, so let's change the key. Whatever he broke on the right side last year, he broke on the left side. SF Giants, okay. Sucks. So now what happens is, and this is really fun during a live event like the Academy Awards yeah. or the Super Bowl, because all of the tweets that are coming in, uh, not super active right now, will scroll down on the screen as they come in. Let's pick something. Uh, <laughs> something that people care something about Something people care me, about. Apparently. Give me a hot topic right now. Bieber. Be <laughs> I don't know. It's, you know somebody's going to be talking about that. And you can use hashtags or you could just use plain old search terms. Um, <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> There's a pause button, and uh, I guess it's just a little quiet right now it's on the Twitter. It's more event based. Yeah, it's much better if there's something big yeah. going on. I I use this during the Grammys, the Oscars, the Super Bowl, and it's a really great way just to follow. You know what? Most recently, I used it during the fabulous uh, UFC uh, 149 Ultimate Fighting Championship yeah. uh, pay per view. Because you're into that. I'm stuff. so into it, and UFC, I was watching right. to see, you know. Like everybody who was going to win for, you know, who was going to beat that yeah, other guy. Exactly. Yeah. So, so well, that's fun. That's, I, I actually, that, that, that's always a lot of fun. That's my favorite time on Twitter when right. I realize we're all talking about the same thing. Even oh, if it's I know. Not it's so Galaxy much. S3. There's a good one. Ah, that is a good yeah, one. So I'll just do Galaxy because, uh, you know, uh, the broader the search term, the more likely you are you're going to see something. So let's say th this is during the Galaxy S3 announcement and you want to see as it, as it comes in. Uh, you can. It's so slow. Maybe, maybe let's just just look. You can choose the keyword. You can. Oh, this is why. Okay, now this is really a nice feature. I forgot to mention this. Um, you can choose how big the accounts are. So I have it set to maximum. I only want to see responses from users with more than ten thousand followers. Oh. If I turn this down oh. to let's say I don't want to see users you with eight hundred followers, I just filtered out. Then it's much more lively. Oh, okay. But that's nice because what it does is let you set it for the quality of the feed. Somebody with ten thousand or more followers is a big feed, right? Yeah. So maybe if you're following some you know, you don't want to see a lot of silly little things. That's really cool. So this is coming in in real time. Well and also if you know if I just want to see all the stuff that's coming in about this week's Mad Men, like I don't care how many followers you have. I just right. want to see all of it. Exactly. You can filter by location. So if you're doing something that is local, let's say the Butter and Eggs Day Parade, I could say I only want to see people who are within a mile, five miles, 20 miles. In this case, I'm following everybody in the world. And you can also do this, which I think is great. Only track tweets 
Say that five times fast. Only track tweets featuring links. So let's say you want to, I want to see links. If you turn that on, only the tweets that have an actual link in there will come through. Oh, that's cool. Isn't that great? I, I think this is a, you know, it's a specialized Twitter tool that is incredibly useful. It's called Streamboard. And uh, I don't think it costs anything, but I might be wrong on that. I'll look it up. So, um, you know, one of the things I wanted to mention that. about that TweetBot that I had forgotten, which is one of the coolest things for anybody who's familiar with Storify, uh, which is something that we've Love talked Storify. about in the past. Yeah. TweetBot now in conversation view. So there's a conversation between Anthony DeRosa and a le- nice lady named Michelle. If I now want to start building this into a Storify page, oh. I go send to... And I say, That's a nice tweet feature. this conversation. Now it says, creating story. And I go, ah, did I just tweet it? No. But I did just add it to Storify. And then it gives me the option to tweet out the link to my Storify page. That is pretty cool for anybody who's um, spending a lot of time aggregating news and events. And, you know, this certainly, it, Storify works very well for a certain um, uh, it, it could work fine for the Oscars, but um, people use it a lot in political events, um, the sorts of things where we're counting on Twitter a lot to get a lot of different sources from people who might not actually work in journalism, that sort of thing. So that's a nice thing that TweetBot um, did uh, build in, Storify support. Streamboard is a buck ninety nine, by the way. A buck ninety nine. Yeah. Streamboard, that's and it's awesome. uh, universal, so you can put it on the iPhone and the uh, iPad, which is uh, handy as well. One of the other Twitter apps we haven't talked about in a long time, um, and uh, you could kind of call it like the OG third party app. <laughs> One of them, anyways, is Hootsuite. Original gangsta. Original gangsta, and Hootsuite got some flack some time ago because they were going to be the first third party app that was going to allow inline advertising right. into your tweet stream. No, am I crazy? But I don't, I don't see any. Of that. Is that not happening? No, because I don't see them anywhere. They make um, plenty of money because you pay them if you want to have multiple accounts. Uh huh. So I have a Hootsuite account that allows us all to post to. Yeah, it's Twitter. good. It's good for group Twitter accounts. Exactly, or businesses that want to follow the accounts. It's really designed, I think, for for businesses that want to have multiple editors posting yes. to an account. It'll automatically put initials in, for instance. It's not cheap though. It's several bucks a month per editor. So one of the reasons I don't use it that much is because I didn't want to have everybody editing it. But it's a very handy way of, let's say, I want to give everybody access to the official Twitter account and have them post when their shows are on. Mm-hmm. That's how I would do it. With, with but I think that a lot of people think, oh, Hootsuite, because that you're right. That is That's that is a really, really good use for Hootsuite. Yeah. But as an individual, it's not going to cost you anything to have an account. Right. And what's nice about it is, even if you're like me, I only have one Twitter account. I don't post back and forth between, you know, like Fake Serling or whatever other Twitter accounts I would have. And this is nice because it just gives me all of the stuff I want to see without actually having to change tabs. So I don't, I'm not clicking on my app replies because they're right here in the middle It's kind of like TweetDeck, isn't it? Well, in that respect. It's got the column thing. Well, but TweetDeck even so, you know, I'm having to swipe around and, right. and choose on my left-hand rail. This is my home feed, all the people I'm following, all the people who have mentioned me, all the stuff I have favorited lately. Favorites, depending on who you are. I mean, when I favorite something on Twitter, I'm just bookmarking it because I want to reference it yeah, later. Yeah, me too. I think so there it's are not people. Really a favorite thing. Scoble does Here's a lot of favoriting. Yeah, favorites I love just... your Twitter uh, icon, by the way. Thank it's a you. You're wearing a funny hat. I am. It's a fedora. Yeah, I like um, it. it's funny because it's on the side of my face. But anyway, this is this is just a, a nice view that I like, and that um, what's nice also about Hootsuite, it is it'll allow you to um, sync up your Facebook account and your LinkedIn account and your Foursquare account as well. So if I want to just take a quick look at my Facebook news feed, I can do that from Hootsuite as well. In general, I like to keep my social networks separate. Uh, That's just my personal preference. But it's nice that you have the option to kind of add the big guns into one interface, especially if you spend a lot of time reading Twitter and you want nice, easy ways um, to access some of your other content as well. And again, for my personal Hootsuite account, that I don't, that I haven't upgraded because it's just me. It's free, and some people just like to have all that information on the page at once. Some people think it's I'm, overwhelming. I'm glad it's here because I did used to use TweetDeck that way mm-hmm. as a kind of dashboard, and then when Twitter bought them, they just fell apart, and they don't have an iPad app, and it just it's frustrating to me. So the Hootsuite is a very good. Uh, I like Hootsuite a lot. Do you think that Twitter bought TweetDeck because they were the most dangerous competitor and they well, just wanted to screw it up so that people started using Twitter's own na- native apps? What happened was 
Bill Gross's company uh, was going to buy it. Uh -huh. In fact, they'd already, everybody thought, closed the deal. It was uh -huh. reported in TechCrunch and everything. And Twitter was so afraid that Bill Gross, this is his company, it's Uber Media, I think. Uber Media. Name. Yeah, um, I remember this story. He was trying to become kind of a competitor to Twitter, in effect, by owning the Twitter clients, and he already had several others. So Twitter swooped in, offered a ridiculous amount of money for TweetDeck, to, merely to keep it out of Uber Media's hands. And then they just let it die. So, yes, the answer to your question, short answer is yes. Is yes. exactly what happened. It was Twitter did not care about TweetDeck. They did Deck. not care, and it was a defensive uh, ploy. And it, yeah. You know, when they bought Tweety, which is essentially the core for Twitter for iOS and uh, OS X. Which was the best app at the time. They really, that's what they ran with. Mm -hmm. uh, TweetDeck, not so much. It's kind of sad, actually. It is I got sad. One more, I got one more app, and I thought that you had showed this on the social hour. It's called TwizGrid. Wouldn't you like an app that instead of showing the text content of tweets, just showed image content? Yes. Like it would just aggregate all the pictures from a yes. Twitter stream. That's what this does. Now, this is TwizGrid. It's free, T-W-I-Z-G-R-I-D. And they have uh, a few uh, lists which they kind of rotate. This is a TwizGrid faves. It looks a little bit like, um, almost like an Instagram. In fact, I suspect many of these pictures are cross-posted from Instagram. If you see a picture you like, you can tap it. It'll open it up. It'll show, yeah, in fact, this was an Instagram post. It'll show the full uh, tweet. I, I don't know why, and maybe I'm just doing something wrong, and TwizGrid, if I am, please tell me. Um, it seems to me that I should be able to just look at my feed, uh, but I, I don't seem to be able to. I only seem to be able to look at their specialty feeds, and they do change these. There's faves, cars, charities, fashion and design, food, nature, pets, travel, and the Twizzerati. But that's only right now. They will rotate these categories from time to time to give you fresh so pictures. So up in the left-hand corner, if you click on TwizGrid... Upper like, the left-hand corner. Yeah, like that doesn't go... Uh, yeah, you know, no. if, if somebody uh, from TwizGrid would tell me, am I doing something wrong? I can do a search within my Twitter feed. So I could say, these are my two Twitter accounts. Yeah. And I could say, okay... So, uh, so, so click on here's Abigail people, Laporte. Uh, well, it doesn't... Oh, it does. Duh. No, this is stuff I've tweeted. See? Oh, I see. That's not what I want. I want to see people I'm following. And if I go to people I'm following, instead of giving me... Unless I'm doing something wrong, it seems like it's giving me individuals. So I could say, well, what has William Shatner posted? And this will be all the images William Shatner has posted. None. So I would like it if we just do my whole... Thing has some other things as a safe uh, filter, so you can keep the adult images out of your feed. Um, it's uh, it's I think it's a handy thing um, in in the sense that if you want to just kind of see a lot of images that are straight from Twitter, you can. You can also add pictures directly. Uh, you can tweet from it directly because it knows as it's iOS, it knows your Twitter accounts, and it gives you a full search as well. So I could search, for instance, for Galaxy. Uh, S3, and I'd probably find a bunch of images that others had posted on Twitter of the Galaxy you S3. You know, Amber did talk about this on the I social think, hour. I think you did, yep. And I swear she had figured out a way to look at everybody that it she was following. It seems like you should be able to. Yeah. I think we're just a little silly. We're just a little dense. I'm, I'm, I'm not getting it. Help us. I'm not getting it. Help us, please. Um, but, you know, the, it's fun if you're into the, the things that the uh, albums are. It's going yeah. through all of Twitter and finding all the car pictures, uh, for instance. For example. Kind of fun. And you can see it's pretty fast. And it does nice, big, you know, if you're really into Maserati, it's a nice, big... Uh, picture like that. I like this, and you can do a slideshow and so forth. So that's TwizGrid. It is free, um, but I, it seems like I should be able to see all the pictures in, that, of the people I follow. It has a lot of potential. Uh, maybe it's some sort of hidden functionality that we just don't really well, know. You know what? The to. TwizGrid people are paying attention. The reason I found out about this is they tweeted me, said, "Put your Norwegian pictures up there with the hashtag TwizGrid, and we'll feature them." Oh, cool. Yeah, but I didn't. Oh. By the way, can I just say one thing about yeah, iPhoto? Yeah, you're going to, whether I <laughs> Yes, go ahead. It's a little off please. purpose. Go, go but, ahead. Uh, you know, normally what I would do if I go on a photo safari, as this was, is I'd copy things to the computer and use Lightroom. Mm -hmm. But I've started this new iPhoto, which they put out when the new iPad yeah. came out. It is fantastic. Using the camera companion kit, for a great way for me to not only find all my pictures, but to edit them, these are raw, these are raw files, mm -hmm. so I got them into the camera and I was able to black and white them, uh, enhance them, you can pick them and flag them, 
all of these features really turned out to be really, really almost as good, in my opinion, as, uh, as Lightroom. Certainly a great way to do it on the iPad while I'm sitting on the train. Uh, and look at this gorgeous picture. And I you know, was able to bring up the sky a little bit. Oh, wait a minute. Here's a little dust on my lens. So I'm going to get the, uh, the healing brush. Whoops. Uh, get the healing brush out here and repair that. Heal and it's that just, sky. And you just paint with your finger. It's such a natural use. Oops, I have to go to the original before I do that. <laughs> see, I see how this is, had taken up your eight hours on the train. Well, I don't know what just happened there. Come back. Come back, Shane. What's going on? Looks like... I think I found a bug, huh? Uh, it's... it's a, you've got a glitch in the matrix. Of There's a glitch. There Let's press the edit button. Yeah. Press the... Uh, 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 these are the sliders, which are really cool for just, like, sky. I just turned up the sky, and mm -hmm. the sky gets turned up but let's see if i can get the heel thing working now click repair there you go and then i'm just gonna erase right there because there's a little um that's a little glitch on my yeah sensor and now you don't all have fixed. that little thing all fixed you're all good this is uh, i i photo i just want to uh, kind of we talked about it when it came out but what you've had real world experience enough to say this is an amazing program yeah really good real world experience i mean i had so much fun Here's my favorite. I'll show you my favorite uh, image. And then you can post directly to Facebook. Um, I made a journal. You know, we talked about the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the journals that are uh, available. Here's my Nordic Light journal. And it's really, it's just a really fun way to take your pictures and turn it into uh, something that you can then share on mobile me or online. I just love this image, by the way. I just that's my favorite image. That that's a good one. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, Jeez, that, is that looks like Abe, something that Abe you'd Fromm feature on Twit Photo. And Morton Kolkwald. That's it's a one really of, good. That's my favorite picture that I took on the trip. And by the way, that black and white processing is done. It was a color picture is done in iPhoto. You should this put it on Smug Mug and get rich. <laughs> get so rich. Uh, so much fun. Anyway. Um, I just want to come back with a report from the field. There you go. Take it to the south of France. iPad, well, I absolutely will. As long as you have a big enough iPad. I think I would iPad. ever go anywhere without this I guy. Know. Well, I, I what mean, I found that you know I only have sixty four. I have a sixty four gig, but so you don't have a whole lot of storage. Um, but you have enough that you could do you know yeah, a few batches. Yeah, batches, batches. batches at a time. And then delete it deletes as you go, so it's great. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, for the links that we mentioned, mentioned a bunch of stuff. Twitter apps. What's good? What's bad? It's a Twitter app. That's what's bad because you know That's I thought you were gonna have to discover. Like I don't. Did you update? Let me check I, mine. I updated. I updated, and I actually waited to do it live on the show because I wanted my natural the reaction. The latest. Ooh, it's so much better. The latest version. Whatever. Sucks. But uh, but we do have a lot of other links, and hopefully you got something out of the other options that we showed you. Go to twit.tv slash IPT. That's where we put all of our show notes for all of our episodes. That's also where our past episodes are as well. Every episode page has an uh, inline video of, of the two wonderful hosts. <laughs> and Who would those be? And sometimes they're hats. Well, it's you and me, unless you're gone. Nice hat. And then the show notes down below um, shows you everything that, like. that we talked He's, about. That, who is that guy? Way too good looking. He's very good looking. I don't understand. I agree. How did that person get on there? He's Norwegian. <laughs> is he? Half Norwegian. Is he? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Is that why you wanted to go to Norway? Well, it's why he wanted to go to Norway. But he changed his mind. Yeah, now we're going to France. It's fine with me. He would have loved the hurt. He looks Norwegian, actually. Well, he, yeah. He looks he's, like, you know, he's blonde. Everybody he's there the whole... looked like MG. Yeah. Everybody. He's... That's He could have been. <laughs> the Odinga, am I right? He looks like he was in, uh, in Norway. Well... By the way, it's like the Some middle of the night time. in Norway. They have to stay up very late to uh, to watch us. Thank you for watching from the middle uh, in the middle of the night, Norway. Quick reminder that we do shoot iPad today live on Thursdays, 1.30 p.m. Pacific, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. We'd love to have you join us live, watching everybody in chat and who's uh, replying to us on Twitter while we're making the show. But remember, if you can't watch us live, that's okay. You can go to twit.tv slash IPT and get all of our subscription links, videos that you missed. You can subscribe to our audio feed, too, if that's what you choose to do. That's cool with us. Um, but don't that's worry. Cool us, we'll make it as easy as possible for you to stay up with the shows as they progress. You know what I like? What? Watching Lillehammer in Norway on my iPad 
from my TV in That's, Petaluma. That can't be legal. It's that can't. probably not, but it sure is fun. And actually, <laughs> it can... all comes thanks to Slingbox. Oh. So Slingbox is that thing you, you take home. Go to Amazon, Best Buy, Slingbox.com and pick up a Slingbox. You attach it to your home theater system. So you plug it into your DVR, your satellite box, your cable box, your DVD, whatever you've got. And then, and this is the key, you plug the other end into the internet. And now you've got password protection, protected access over the internet to everything, your full TV experience from your living room. Everything that you would do in your living room. You could change channels, you could set DVR recordings, you could play back DVR recordings. It's all there. It's so cool. It's, uh, it's Slingbox. Now, I, w- I want you to try it uh, right now. By, or just find out more anyway by going to slingbox.com slash twit. And then I presume that you probably have an iPad, right? Uh, if you've got an iPad, then it's pretty simple. All you have to do is uh, is um, fire up the uh, Sling Player on your iPad, just like that. And you can watch TV. You can even, I just, I switched it over to my antenna. So you have you know, all the devices here, my dish network, everything. That's the antenna. I, gotta, I don't have an antenna. So that's why it says weak signal. Um, here it's going to switch over to the uh, dish player. You got to try this thing. Slingbox.com slash twit to find out more. The beauty of this is with your PC, your Mac, your Xbox, actually not Xbox, iPad, iPhone, Android phone, mm-hmm. Android tablet, you can watch your home TV system. So I've got the iPad in Norway and I'm watching local news. That's what Colin does because he's like really homesick for Philadelphia. Yeah. He's always watched the Philadelphia news. Because he's got the Slingbox back at home. Amazing. Slingbox.com slash twit. Find out more. And we thank them for their support of iPad today. We sure do. Hey, so something cool happened this week. Spotify announced something that means something to some of us. Me especially because, you you know, you're an RDO user. I am an RDO user, but part of the reason that I am an RDO user is because they have such a great iPad Beautiful app. Beautiful iPad app. Spotify never had one. And then Mog did one. Mm-hmm. And Spotify didn't. It finally does. And thank goodness, you have to be a pro user. You have to be a paid user to use this. Right. Unless you can sync on the same wireless network, you can sync offline songs to your iPad oh. if you're not a paid okay. user. But as far as streaming music, yes, you have to be a premium subscriber. Right. And it does support AirPlay and all of that. Mm-hmm. It's full screen. It's beautiful. It, you know, you're, if you look at it, it's going to look very similar to the desktop app of Spotify. Spotify is, as you probably know, the music service. These are all my friends. Uh, you're probably in here. I think you're a friend. Yeah, I so don't th- use Spotify much, but hopefully we're friends so via are, Facebook or something. These, Yeah, these are people I follow. So one of the, just like RDO... Uh, remember Greg Drebin? We used to work with him. Now, yes. see, Greg's a good example. He worked at MTV's, like, really up in the current music. So I follow him because I know Greg's going to be hip on the latest songs. So when you follow somebody like that, then you can kind of find out what's cool. Like Holly Metzger is my friend Holly. He's big into the Grateful Dead. So I know he's going to have all the Grateful Dead, you know, stuff. That it, so And this is, this is one of the social features I particularly like about Spotify. Um, it will. The other social feature some people don't like is when you listen to a song. It, if you you can set it to not to do this, but normally when you listen to a song, for instance, let's say I listen to Rihanna's "Birthday Cake." Uh, when you listen to a song, <laughs> oh, <laughs> what is that? Awesome. A kazoo orchestra? What the hell? Uh, it's like a swarm of bees. <laughs> oh. See now, unfortunately, everybody on Facebook thinks I'm listening to this song. Well, you are. That's exactly what you're doing. Well, it's for it's for demonstration purposes. You but can, you can turn that feature uh, off. I have the same <laughs> problem with RDO where I'm like, I listen to a song it's for three seconds before I decided that it sucks. Friction-free sharing is and a little too easy. I know. Uh, they have an offline mode, which means playlists that you've made available for offline listening. This is one of the features. I think all of them do this. They'll cache music, so mm-hmm. you don't have to be online to listen. Um, gapless playback, which I like, and then this is the uh, private session. If you don't want Facebook to know. That you're listening to those. So you're, you know. that you're listening to. What's that new group of like preteen boys that everyone loves? Yeah, I wouldn't want anybody to know. One that. night, one one night in Paris. Know, Let's see what, what MG's I mean. listening. He's probably MG's probably listening to that. Probably. <laughs> it's one edition, local edition. <laughs> local edition. No, that's a bar. One Direction. One Direction. Thank you. MG's been listening to the Black Swan soundtrack. Oh. Okay. See, <laughs> that's kind of dark. <laughs> <laughs> but Whatever. he's a big. And I think you know this. He's a big supersonic fan. So following somebody is great. Uh, it's a, as you can see a beautiful interface. I just press the play button. It starts to play. It will use um, it will use the uh, AirPlay to play out to anything that the iPad could play out to. 
Um, the only thing I, I I have played around with the Spotify app, even though I I do sort of prefer the audio experience, but mostly because I've just invested. I have collections right. with audio, and it's kind of hard to. They should really work on their exporting uh, it's services. Because you're a small town girl, I, living. I'm very lonely in a small uh, town smoky world. Smoky rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Did you take the midnight train uh, going anywhere? I have been on many trains at midnight. Yes. I've probably taken a train that left at midnight. Uh, I'm a city ten boy. times. Born and raised, Born yeah. and raised in South Detroit. And proud of it. <laughs> Actually, isn't MG from Detroit? This no, is your song. No wonder he's listening. Oh, Cleveland, Detroit. It's all the same. Well, I don't the think the Cleveland people would say that. <laughs> Nor would the Detroit I'm just people. Teasing. Please, yes. do, oh, not, all right. do not email me. My biggest issue with Spotify is that I feel like, yes, you can look up a user and get a lot of information about what they've been listening to. But in their new releases section... Uh, with RDO, it tells me uh, what album came out this week versus two weeks ago and who has been listening to it and why that's in right. um, the most played uh, view. Spotify has a little bit less context. So it's like, okay, well, new releases, that's cool. Okay, that's the new stuff. But when something's on heavy, right. heavy rotation, let's I'm say... I'm not getting any information you don't, about it. You don't know who else likes it. And yeah. sometimes, depending on the friend, you could be influenced yeah, by that. I, I think you're right. That's actually a very good point. Trending playlists near you, and uh, that's location-based. Trending playlists among friends, that's, of course, among the people you're following. But it doesn't give you a lot of that context of, like, this is this, is this week's a uh, hot item. I, you know, I like it mostly because the way I use it is like I use these other services. I make playlists of artists I like, then I don't have to buy the albums. That's, right. the, main, that's the main reason. Yeah. We... Uh... <laughs> We often spend a lot of time researching apps, and we usually don't talk about apps that aren't that great because right. why There's are you so watching? Many good apps. Yeah, right. why are you watching the show if you know you don't want to hear these bad reviews about apps that aren't worth your time? However, I did take an exception this week with an app called Hello Cupcake, um, which I have no problem with cupcakes, by the way. So you know, I, saw I don't this. inherently hate this app. I'm so glad you spent three bucks on this. I sure did, Leo. Well, and, you spent three bucks technically. And <laughs> we spent it together. Together. Um, at first, I thought, "Oh, this is going to be a great cookbook for cupcake Absolutely. making." Absolutely. When I, I originally, the reason that this came across my radar is because it is iTunes iPad app of the week, and these are books should be. And these are books that people love. Yeah. Hello, cupcake. It's a whole series. App of the week should be right. You know, tried and true. Right. It's going to be awesome. And so I thought, you know, I'm not a big baker or cupcake maker, but I'm going to. Try this app out, and if I love it, I'm going to suggest it to people like you. Either you like baking, right. but if you don't, you can gift it to somebody because that's right. something that you can do with an iTunes, which is really fun for people. However, I don't think it's worth the money because okay, so here this is uh, this is the the um, you don't actually the, the home get, view. You, you, Here's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, yeah. they're interesting looking cupcakes. Yeah. Gotcha. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that's what you get for, for ten cupcakes for your three bucks. Yeah, everything else. It says purchase requires network access because for whatever reason it doesn't. I don't know. It, it can't Wi-Fi tell you're online. Data. But trust me when I say that it's another like ninety nine cents to buy these extra packages. So I mean, okay, I get no, ten sorry. creative cupcakes. And to be honest, not even. It's all about the icing, obviously, right? I mean, it's not even like totally. Big, it's about how to make this. You know. Now I will say that. Let's see the recipe. Does it actually? Yeah, so they, these are like yeah, cue ball cupcakes, which is kind of fun. And they do yeah. this little like oh, stop yeah. motion video, which yeah. is like you only watch it once. Right. Because all you want to do is make sure that you, you know, right. uh, I'm just looking for make a, a pool table for your kid's birthday or something. Right. So yeah. that's fine. Oh, instant replay. Wow. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's but great. again, this is, it's cute, but it's gimmicky. This is not, you know, what I need out of a cookbook. Yeah. Then if I want to know, okay, what do you need for the ingredients? It'll let you know. A lot of food dye. Uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, these <laughs> things are really bad for you. Yeah, There's nothing gotta be horrible. It's um, sugar, fat, and food dye. That's right. And then if you go to <laughs> sort of your, this is, you know, this is the stuff that you need. balls. Yeah. It'll, they don't even tell you how to make the cupcake. Well, they do. It's like a basic cu- cupcake recipe you use they for all do. of them. They do. There's audio associated with this. But, I mean, I mostly this is about the right icing. Now, but, I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll give you a sense of how to do it. And that's kind of interesting. But I still feel like too many apps now are saying, like, this is an amazing app. Look how much you can get. But there's all these in-app purchases yeah, that, I agree. you know, it's it's not a $3 app. It's a $10 right. app. I agree. Just to keep yourself interested. And in this case, I feel like even though this kind of looks cool and many of you might be like, this is awesome. I'd love to make this. That's fine. 
But yeah, again, these are successful cookbook lines, Hello Cupcake, and then right. there's a couple other books that this duo and this of is again have put the app of the week from Apple Computer, which is why we're paying attention to it. Exactly. This Maybe because Apple part makes a lot of money fun. on this, right? Look at how they put the frosting. Huh. You put it in a glass, and then you and you smash Smoosh it down, it yeah. and then you make a little incision at the bottom. I actually did learn that. I'll so tell you I'm how I've been burned by in-app purchases. But yes. Camera Awesome, which I like, is yeah. a Smug Mug app. It yep. has a few filters. By the time you buy them all, $13. Uh, another, another example that I just recently uh, fell for. Um, games, games, you almost expect that. That's not a, a right. big deal. It's when, when the, like, this, the, I love this paper app, right? Mm -hmm. But then you start using it. It's beautiful. The brushes. But then you really need the brushes. Yep, and they're all extra. And it ends up $9 for brushes. Yep. Uh, OMG Pops Draw Something. Uh... Fun program, but you don't get all the colors unless you level get up points or yep. Or buy if you something. need a hint, then you right. lose points. That sort of thing. Right. It's it's. I understand why this works for making money. Totally get it. And Hipstamatic is an example of an app that I love, and I understand that I have to pay for extra camera packages, and I kind of just do it because I think that the rest of the app is so good. But we can't have all these apps continue to do this, no. and they will. So I, I don't know what me saying is going to change. But it's just it's important to remember, once you've bought into an app for $3, it's so much easier to say, well, I already bought the app, so sure, I'll buy this extra cupcake recipe for a dollar here and there. And then all of a sudden, you've, you've spent a lot more than you thought you would. It's, it's almost like buying something on credit, you know? You it's end up paying a lot more than you thought you were going to pay. It's taking freemium too far. Exactly. I think. We got a voicemail from, uh, from, uh, from Brett. Uh, Brett the Pyromaniac, I like to call him. Really? Yeah. Mm. Uh, he's, well, I'll let him explain. It's Brett from Pork Barrel Barbecue. Uh, it's, it's odd for a barbecue company to, to think about the iPad, but we got a little bored, and we actually grilled a, a new iPad, <laughs> uh, and it, there was a lot of fire. Will it grill? And a nice, Nice fat cap, and it, it was pretty tasty. Nice fat uh, cap. Thought you might want to check it out. Go to porkbarrelbbq.com slash can you grill it. And from That's all of us funny. here at Pork Barrel, keep up the great work. See ya. Where is Pork Barrel? Oh, I don't know. But I do have the iPad grilling video. Chad, roll it. Roll it. Okay. Okay. I, this is sacrilege. That is not even an iPad 1. This is a late model it's iPad. It's horrible. They are, these are horrible people. This is a backfired also, experiment. Also, I got to think the gas is being released at this point. And by the way, you shouldn't be burning lithium batteries. That's Horrible. a terrible idea. What? How bored do you have to be? By the way, they did also burn a Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1, uh, lest you think that they're just Apple haters. But I think this is a waste of money, energy, time. I'm, I'm worried about that and battery. And my so. goodwill toward all men. Yeah. But I'll tell you something. Everything tastes fine with barbecue sauce on it. All right. Wow. You guys got your it's a, time it's in It's a takeoff on, you know, will it blend, which, which you know, they, sure. they get will a lot it, of... Will it grill? Will it grill? I guess if you work at a barbecue place, Everything these sorts of things start seeming like good ideas. Hard to say. We got an email from Darren Cronian. He's the editor of a blog called Travel Rants. He says, hi guys, I thought you might be interested to hear about an app that allows you to report unfair airport screenings by the TSA that's available on the iPad and Android phones. Not that I would ever do that. Nor would you, Sarah Lane. If you thought it was unfair, why not? Because you don't want to get grilled the next time you go through like I that iPad. I don't think that that's the don't right grill attitude. grill you like an iPad. I think 500 degrees will If you feel your that battery. your rights have been compromised, you should be complaining. Don't or, you? Or, like any good American, just going along for the ride. Quietly accepting whatever the TSA wants to do. Well, if this sounds like something that you have an issue with, <laughs> I just wanted to point it out. What's it it's, called? It's called Fly Rights, all one word. Wow. It's actually put together by the Sikh Coalition because they've had some issues. Oh, yeah, because they wear turbans. Well, yeah, they're getting stopped all the time. Sure. Uh, but if you want to report something, and, you know, I'm not, this is, this is totally up to you. If you are in a situation where you feel like you, you want to have some tools at your disposal, this might be great. Otherwise, you know, don't, don't make something out of... Uh, don't make a mountain out of a molehill, I guess. But contact information, um, incident it happens reports. happens all the time. 
But I really don't know. Airline and flight number. Is there any recourse? Or I mean, aren't you just? Aren't we just the victims of the TSA? No matter what they do. Uh, yes, I'm sure. I don't want to send a report. Um, <laughs> you know, but I think that's like that's almost like the same attitude as is. Does my vote really count? I mean, it's. I think people need to exercise their rights to speak up if they feel that they if others are in the wrong and that their rights have been compromised. Okay. Okay. I guess you just. Sail through security every time. No problems here. Just between you and me. Yeah. It's all bogus security theater. Nothing the TSA does enhances security in the least. Yeah, and everybody that's knows true. that. Right. But you want to get on the plane, right? Yeah. Just go along for the ride. But they keep taking my tweezers. <laughs> <laughs> they can do that. Then they keep taking my, my little, like, two-pound weights. They can do that. No, they can't. That is unacceptable. What am I going to do? I can barely hold them. That's By the, the way, whole point. And this is true. Odinga points out that when you ride the Hürde Grüte, they don't even look. They don't, they don't, they don't care. They don't, there's no metal detector. You just get on that boat, baby. You just hop on the boat. Same thing on the train. Now, let's hop on the boat. Because everybody in Norway is nice. Well, and they all are comfortably wealthy. What a wonderful place. It's, uh, well. it's, it's the 1% of countries. That's cute. I like yeah, that. Yeah. We got a little feedback on uh, last Padre, week's show. Padre, Padre, wait a minute. Now, he's a priest. Yeah. He's a priest. The TSA stole one of my $3,000 cameras. He's a priest, and what? the TSA stole his camera. That's And uncool. But what did you do, Padre? What did you do about it? You prayed for them, Sent right? an incident report through. Good luck. Oh, come on. Good luck. Hey, I want you to have fly rights. That's the name of the app, by the way, fly rights. I thought that that was very nice. I think it's And it's great. a little bit different than, you know, these cupcake apps that we're always seeing featured on app stores. Robert says, or Padre SJ says, he wrote to his Congress member. Okay. Same idea, right? Same idea, right? And did, did you get the camera back, Padre? <sighs> oh, I guess. No one should ever try for anything. Let's just let these... Well, These remember, the, the, the right to fly is a privilege, not a right. Right. Well, then it's, it's not a, a right to fly. It's a privilege to fly, not a right. How big are your weights? Two pounds. <laughs> what are they big. afraid of? I don't know. Like, they you think that... I think throw they thought them at that it was, like, it was like bringing a cannonball onto a plane or something. You can't even use it as a weapon. That's the whole... Well, anyway, believe me. I, I've, I've, uh, I'm over it now. Um, because yes, I have because to you be. have no choice. Well, all right. Fly rights. Feedback on show 95. You were gone. Uh, AMG and I talked about uh, iOS 6 rumors, what we thought was going on, and kind of the lack of rumors, really. It was right. like, we before don't iOS 5, by this time last year, a lot of people had a pretty good idea of what was coming down the pipe. And uh, Hugo, Hugo Kessler wrote in and said, you were talking on the show about iOS 6 and rumors. You both said that you hadn't heard many rumors about iOS 6. But you forgot the most important one. What's that? Apple's bought three mapping companies. They're obviously working on a Google Maps replacement. That's right. That's been rumored for about two years. Right. Finally expected to show up in iOS 6. No mention of that on or the show. Or 7. Another thing. Or 8. Apple bought the company Chomp for $50 million a few months ago. Yes. It appears they're planning on fixing the App Store. Oh. There are also rumors that they oh. completely re are redesigning the iTunes and App Store. <laughs> this has been all over the news. Seems yeah. much more important than the clear all button on the notification center. That's something that MG said that he wanted. Just thought I should mention those three rumors. The mapping one is huge. I think there was just two rumors <laughs> that he mentioned. Well, I'll give you an example. But, you know, yeah, yeah, Apple bought Chomp. They also bought Lala. What did they do with Lala? Nothing. There are rumors that the App Store at the, and iTunes as a whole is about to get an overhaul, and I hope that that's true. They desperately need it. Uh, Hugo, you make good points. Th those were two things we hadn't really touched on. We had touched on the fact that Google Maps seemed to be getting phased out once iPhoto was introduced, and they were using OpenStreetMaps. Only an iPhoto, yeah. yeah. But in that journal thing, when I make a map, it's some weird, funky thing getting tiles from OpenStreetMap. It's not a very good map, by the way. I couldn't no. find Christensen on it. Even OpenStreetMap. Uh, the it's folks better. were like, wow, I it's thought I was data. using this. And yeah. yeah, these aren't even the newest maps. Right. So a uh, reminder that we love hearing from you, even if you want to critique us, because that just makes our show better. So keep them coming. Videos, voicemails, emails, rants and raves against us and the TSA. Actually, please don't do that no. because that's, I can't, I can't do that. We both want to fly. Yeah. And <laughs> we just can't be crusaders, although we would like I do to pull, be. I did, I do. So we have a fan who's in the customs service. Mm -hmm. Now, those are good people. Sure. They're very good. Yeah. And uh, he gave me U.S. Customs and Border Patrol luggage tags. 
Oh, that's awesome. So I make sure I use those. And he, every time I arrive in the U.S., they treat you a Vic little bit. Vic is there. He's there. He's standing there making sure I can get through. So is thank he, he's, you, Captain He's always Vic. on duty no matter what time you're walking through? I don't know. Through. It seems like that's every time. I, well, I think he must be like just He's check. one step ahead He's of looking you. out for me. Yeah. He's your guardian angel And I have those tags, customs. which is great. I even have a whistle. You're so lucky. That's so awesome. The, the, let the TSA try I to just, take my I just, U.S. Customs. Fly coach in the middle and cry the whole time. <laughs> Take an Ambien and wish for the best. We want to hear from you. Write us at ipadditwit.tv. Leave us a voicemail at 757-504-IPAD. Yeah. Or for extra points, you can send us a video. But do not grill another iPad. That's the last, that's the last free pass I give you, sir from wherever you're from at that uh-uh. grilling place. Uh-uh. Uh, but, no uh, more grilling of nice iPads. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. You are on our, you're on our bad list. Not allowed. But uh, no, we, we appreciate all of our feedback this week. Um, as always, keep it coming. Audible.com. What's that? Let me tell you something. If you ever ride the hurdy-gurdy or an airplane uh-huh. or go on long train rides, I was actually able to listen this is so awesome. I was able to listen uh, to the stand as I as I f- floated, trained, and flew around the world. I would not travel with. I do not get in the car without Audible. I do not uh, do housework. I don't go to the gym without Audible. Audible audiobooks, fantastic. It's a hundred thousand plus books at Audible dot com. The challenge we know is to go there and go. Oh, what do I listen to? There's so much great stuff. So here's my su- suggestion to you. Go there, then pick a book, any book that's good, that's a one credit book, which is almost all of them, and then visit audiblepodcast.com slash iPad today, and you can get that book for free. Just sign up for the gold account. The book is yours for free, no charge for the first month. You can cancel it any time. That book is yours to keep forever. Hunger Games, awesome. Have you read that, Chad? Uh, I no. have. All three of them. Have you really? And all through Audible. Oh, see? Fifty Shades of Grey, very sexy. <laughs> I've not read that one. Very, well, that's why it's a bestseller. Very sexy. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. Sci-fi, history, fiction and nonfiction. T- New York Times bestseller list. It's all there. Pick a book. I'm telling you, that's, The Stand is a great choice. That's like 48 hours of Stephen King wonder. Uh, and and uh, it's yours for free. I think it's one credit. Audiblepodcast.com slash iPad today. Guilty Wives by Jane Patterson. Yeah. James Patterson. Yeah. Guilty. Why are you so guilty? Why are you so guilty? Oh, hello. Miss, little Miss Wife. Only minutes after yeah. I was reading the, Patterson's the premise. Great. Go ahead. Scroll down. Let's see. Yeah. Chad. Chad. We're Go reading. back to Guilty Wives. What, what? Back to Guilty Wives. Only minutes after Abby Elliott and her f- three best friends step off a private helicopter, they enter the most luxurious, sumptuous, sensually pampering hotel they've ever been to. I love this book. Why are they guilty? <laughs> well, something's about to go terribly it wrong like in Monte Sex Carlo. Sex in the City Part Two. Mm-hmm. Those in intensive care and those who posed security risks. Oh, see, like I me. I like the infirmary because of the strong this lighting, so what I need which on lent my drive. some vibrancy to my otherwise dreary confinement. Okay, pause it. I liked helping people. I gotta say. I, okay, guilty pleasure. I will listen to romance novels uh, on long drives because it really, it really, the time goes fast. The hotter, the better. Well, hey, now it's audiblepodcast.com slash iPad today. That's right. Now it's time to don our app caps. It's app cap award time. I got a good one. I got a good one. I got a good one too. I'm really happy about this week. Go for it. I will. So. Um, a while ago, we've actually done it a couple times. We've done a cookbook roundup, uh, cooking yes. for the iPad. iPad is one of the best tools. Did you, are you going to recommend the Hummus Bible? Because that is a great book. No, is that such a thing? <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, I need to know much more about this because hummus is my favorite thing in the world. But no, actually, in this episode, I'm going to recommend a companion to an app I have already recommended, which is uh, How to Cook Everything. Now, How to Cook Everything is one of my favorite apps. I'll just show you that really quickly. Oh, I'm going to have to Mark get Bittman, this. Mark he's, um, he's a chef. He's a writer for the New he's York great. Times. No, he's great. He is the most, I would say, of all the cookbook apps that I use, and I really try to use them all regularly because I, like I like teaching myself to cook. This is consistently the best app because it's very, uh, it's, it's um, if I search for, let's say, like, 
asparagus, right? Like I've got yes. some asparagus. I just Love got it. Asparagus. It's in season right it's now my in California. Favorite thing in the I world. have so many different recipes that I can choose from, plus variations. So it's nice. It's like, okay, well, I'm not going to do the stir fried pork with asparagus, but I can do some sort of a variation stir fried uh, asparagus with squid or shrimp, that type of thing. Um, I can search by key ingredients. I can go ahead and add those ingredients to my shopping list for the next time I go shopping. I can set timers. I can bookmark favorite recipes. You name it. Also, Mark is really good about like the kitchen basics, which I've actually learned a lot from. For example, what different knives do and yeah. why I need to use the knives I do and how often do I sharpen them and all of that sort of stuff. So Knives I, are like the most important tool. Yeah. This is a $10 app, and I think it's worth every penny if you're going to be cooking Ooh, it's regularly. Pricey. Yeah. However, less than a cookbook, though. Less than the book itself. Well, it's yeah. I mean, it, that's exactly what it Good is. Point. And I prop it up in the corner of the kitchen, and I come right. back to it every few minutes, that sort of thing. But now there's a companion app, and that is How to Cook Everything Vegetarian. Ah, uh, yeah. Because you are a vegetarian, the same guy. Yes, it's exactly the same guy. And what's interesting about this is, as I said, well, wait a second. I'm not going to pay ten more dollars for just the vegetarian recipes that are in the nor or in the original app that I have, but they're not. Oh. Because I did a bunch of keyword searches. These Asparagus, for example, it's a bunch of different recipes. Oh, that's good. I should get this. Uh, I do not want to read this app. Not yet. Now, I do eat fish. This is all uh, vegetarian meals, but he also gives people vegan options. Like, here's what you leave out if you want it to be vegan, you know, if it has eggs or, 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 or dairy in the recipe, for example. But it works exactly the same way. He's got his own picks. He's got featured recipes. This, uh, this rotates. Um, if you use the app regularly, you'll see uh, different featured recipes every so often. Does maybe new content once a come week. in, or is it just the software is just doing that? It's not, there's not new content. Yeah, no, I don't think okay. because it's... Well, you know, I don't want to say that it's not ever new content. The featured stuff does change, though, so it feels new. Yeah. Because otherwise, you're not going to see all these nice pictures and everything. Yeah. Plus, just sort of menu ideas. Hey, you know, I want to put together a holiday dinner. I want it to be a little bit different than usual. Here are some ideas for our Mardi Gras, for example. Um, I love this app, and I love the fact that it is. it feels like, you know, there might be some repeat recipes, but doing a few searches with the same keywords, I couldn't find them. So it feels like a whole new cookbook but it has the same layout um, that I already like. And it works in landscape or portrait. And hey, that's always a nice, that's always a nice Actually, it is for a cookbook because sometimes you want to have it more or less. Yes, sometimes people have, you know, they put like, they'll Mm -hmm. magnetize it and you stick your iPad on the fridge. Mm -hmm. I just happen to usually prop it up in an area that I'm not preparing food, but I love this guy. And he has a really good natural language way to explain stuff. Um, coming right down to like how to peel a carrot that's a better way than the way that you're already peeling the carrot kind of thing this is like absolutely cooking for dummies that actually is probably a different iPad app Um, but it conceptually this is really good for people who have enthusiasm but maybe don't have all the skills yet very cool that's my iPad app I like it now I have a good app oh maybe (laughs) Uh, now but I'm going to say what it is the category people are going to go they're gonna go. They're gonna tune out because nobody wants another RSS reader. Stop. You do because this is this is the one that makes it so easy, so good. This is the best RSS reader, and RSS is still useful. What is RSS? It is a feed that you would get from a website. So instead of going to the website, you can read the feed from the website. It's a great way to aggregate multiple websites into a single application. Particularly useful for me, for instance. For scanning tech news, I do a lot of that. This is called Mr. Reader. His cute little mustache. He's really cute. Let's go into it. I sign into my um, Google Reader account, so it automatically populated it with a ton of feeds. Um, this, you know, will look a little bit similar to any other reader. Almost all readers have the same idea, which is a list. These are folders, so these are a list of individual feeds or folders. For instance, this is an individual feed for my blog. This is uh, this is um, an individual feed for our uh, podcast. By the way, podcasts work in this, which is kind of uh, handy. Yeah. But uh, but f- well, here's my tech news folder. Now this aggregates uh, stories from uh, several dozen. You can even see what all the sources are if I press this button here. Several dozen uh, useful tech blogs and news sources like GigaOM and All Things D and New York Times and so forth. So I can see all the unread ones. Now, here's where it gets useful. So these are, this is a new story. 4G Samsung Galaxy S3 to hit U.S. this summer. I tap the story. 
I can see the basic headline. I can load the full story by clicking Read More, and it will load a browser within here. You'll see right at the top I have buttons for Web, Instapaper, Readability, Read It Letter. Those, those are uh, the common things people use to go there. But this is where it gets really useful down here uh, at the bottom. I can star it. That, that is equivalent of starring in Google Reader. Um, I can favor it. I can tag it and assign tags. But m what I mostly do, and most people I think would do, is I will put it into some sort of bookmarking service. I c in this case, now this is fully customizable. This is in fact not the way it comes. But I put the things that I do all the time. Open it in Safari. Pinboard is my book bookmarking tool. You could use Delicious or a lot of other ones. F if I say Pinboard, I could type in a few notes here. I could type in some tags here. And I could put it on Pinboard right away. Uh, I can also tweet it. Now, remember I talked before about how I set up a special links feed on Twitter called links underscore four yes, underscore twit. You did. Um, this will do to this feed. This automatically goes to Pinboard. So this is an alternate way. I set that up for Flipboard. Look at this. This is really nice. I can put the title in. I could put a link in. It'll let you use your own link shortener. So I use bit.ly. I can add additional text and then I can press send. And now that's going to go out to that Twitter feed. Here's the nice thing. This is completely customizable. Um, really uh, in many, many very interesting ways. Uh, first of all, we've got some layouts. So if you like a darker layout or a lighter layout, this is kind of a New York Timesy layout. You can choose those. Uh, complete control of things like offline reading. You can download, if you're going to get on an airplane, download everything ahead of time in a, in a cache, an image cache. Um, the table of articles, we can change how it looks, we can change how often it gets it, whether it uses Wi-Fi or 3G. Remember I talked about the services, very, very complete services menu, where you drag services that you want to use up into the, this is the menu that I just showed you. Um, and they have, if you look, you know, every browser, OmniFocus, you can copy the URL, copy a short URL, you can email it, print it. Facebook, Delicious, Digo, Zootool, Things, Posturus, Tumblr, Instapaper, Read It, it just all goes on and on and on. So this is a very uh, customizable way of, uh, and, and by the way, you don't even have to go into a story to share it. So let's say Dolby Audio to be built into all Windows 8 versions. So let's say I want to share that story. I just have it on the right here. I can just put it right into Twitter, a couple of push of the buttons, and boom, it's out there. It's saved. This is Mr. Reader couple of books. Yes, you can send to Facebook pages uh, and Facebook uh, itself, of course. Um, lots more nice customizable features. It really is uh, well done. Uh, what is it? It's $3.99? Uh, it's $3.99. Well, yeah. well worth it. If you've been looking, we've talked before about Reader. We've talked about um, uh, New River of News. Mm -hmm. well, there's just a ton of RSS readers. This is the one that I find, by the this way, This is your new love. Fast. And this is the other thing that readers, and one of the reasons people kind of turn away from RSS readers, if you have, as, as you can see, I do many, many sources in my RSS feed yeah. in every category, I literally hundreds of web pages. That's the point of a reader from my point of view. Watch how quick this thing is. Um, that's it. It's all in here just by tapping it. This is the fastest reader by far, fastest I've ever seen. So maybe, maybe I don't know, maybe you've turned away from, uh, from readers. Uh, I hope you haven't, but if you have... Um, this might be uh, something to bring you back. It's called Mr. Reader. This actually, Africa. I have to say, even though Reader, which is R-E-E-D-E-R, which we've, we've, it we've sung its praises on the show in the past, it's great. There's nothing wrong with it, but I have kind of gotten out of the habit. Yeah. So this, Mr. Reader, is a good opportunity for me to build up uh, my RSS list again and actually use it regularly because it's a great way to digest news, especially if you're in the line of work that we well, are. We've we got to do this. We've got to look through a lot of them, but at any time you want to scan, let's, you know, if you're in the petroleum business and you have to keep up on your business, yeah. this, is the, this is the best way to quickly get a lot of information in there and save the stuff you want to read for later in Instapaper, read it later, readability, of mm -hmm. course, but also you could bookmark it and do all those other things. i I just uh, really happy with this one. Mr. Uh, reader, it came out a couple of weeks ago. I haven't been here, so it's my first chance to talk about it, but very, very nicely. Done. Good app cap, Leo. And with that, we're at the end of the show. Oh, I hate this part because it's like we have to say goodbye and we have to tell people that we're going to be here the same time, same place next week. And then week. you have to go to work. And then I have and to go. do a show. Yeah, because I have TNT, TNT live after this. And it's just so depressing. No more goofing off with Leo. No, it's hats. like this is the best hour of my week. Yes, it and better it's be. it's <laughs> all downhill for the next six, day, seven days. Your job is safe for another week. <laughs> 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 
because nobody's giving no, me thirty million. No, that's the truth. <laughs> Sarah Lane, always a pleasure. Thank always you all wonderful. for being here. We do this show when on Thursdays, one thirty p.m. Pacific, four thirty p.m. Eastern time. Watch it, or you'll be sorry. And I, I didn't realize it was Thursdays. I'll, I'll make sure to be here next time. Yeah, it would be nice. Yeah. I'm kind of getting sick of making excuses. <laughs> Thanks for Here's joining us. Norway. Well, oh. Oh, this looks like a Norwegian hat. I don't have one, but this is the best I can do. Oh!